Hey, this is Notzer, and this is Untitled. This week, I want to discuss Wargaming attempting to improve the render delay between Minimap and 3D Rendered Object. This is on the public test server 7.8. The work in progress ships recently are really powerful. This game is definitely going to show that off. Finally, I want to discuss the topic of Germany. Germany just recently allowed for games to openly display the swastika if for artistic or educational. It used to be you could have done that, but no company would argue. They would just make a second version and release that without the texture. So we'll talk about all those things. Game in the background, myself in the Jean Bar. This is a work in progress, and the game's pretty good. So hopefully you enjoy. Now... The last couple of patches, Wargaming has attempted to introduce an improvement in this render delay. And that's what it is. I can't describe it as anything other than it's a delay. The minimap icon is drawn. The ship itself in 3D space is not. And you have to wait and wait and wait. It feels forever. It's about three or four seconds, I would estimate. I think it is worsened the more population there are on, like peak time and stuff like that. So it, it's just not ideal. And I think they tried to introduce it into the live patch two or three patches ago, and it, it just didn't work out. So in 7.8, public test server stage two, they're testing a new render. And I've played on a little bit of it. It feels more responsive. It feels like it's down to one second. This has been implemented in the game to allow for low-spec PCs to have the same sort of experience as high-spec PCs. As someone who has a high-spec PC, I don't care about this at all. I want full advantage, like I deserve, because I have spent all the money to be a part of the master race of PCs. Obviously, it's not fair competitively, and that's their take on it. They, they wanted to limit it artificially, rather than just some sort of system discrepancy, and I can respect that. But... It's a little ridiculous, Wargaming. So, in an attempt to improve this, it should alleviate some of that awkwardness. Seeing the ship drawn, but not seeing it actually in 3D space, it's incredibly awkward to me. You know, the first reaction I have is, is there something wrong with my PC? Is something desynced from the server? And I think they need to alleviate that. It, it can't come across as that. It's good that they're trying to protect low spec. Ooh, nice. It's good that they're trying to protect low spec, but they need to do it in a more elegant manner. And I, I hope that the render solution that they're testing right now, get eyes on it, you know, check it out, works out on live, but I'm not holding my breath. It's just something that is a quirkiness with the game and... Because we exist in such a concealed, unconcealed world, it is exacerbated. If everyone remained spotted for an extended period of time, maybe it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But because the gameplay loop revolves around it, it needs to be much, much higher priority. And it seems like they're trying to fix it without breaking the game, and I, I appreciate that. Speaking of breaking the game, though, some of the premiums they have released recently, and uh, the work in progress ships specifically, they really have gone to the extreme to introduce something that not only is effective, but is incredibly effective. Look at this. Look at this scenario. Enemy Seattle angling as well as he possibly could against my ship. I'm using the reload consumable, and I am just shoving in tons of damage to this Seattle. Perfectly, you know, concealed, perfectly angled. He can't really do much better. But I was able to just dump a ton of damage in. And that is where the discussion leads. Does main battery reload really fit on a battleship? Can they make it balanced? Jean Barr, it, it just... It just feels incredibly awesome in certain situations. Now, they've limited to only two chargers base. Premium is three, and then superintendent is four. And every single charge you have of this skill, it, it, it really dictates the success of the engagement. You could just dump so much damage into a battleship or a cruiser that they can't react. And it's in such a small window that they can never return fire without 
opening themselves up to taking more damage. So it, it's really, really crazy. I've heard some suggestions that maybe they just make the cooldown a little bit longer. You'll notice that I used it on the Seattle, and it's almost up for the Amagi, who is not perfectly broadside, but he's very nearly. And other ships, similar, Hiragumu, the Kitakaze, Akizuki, honestly, these light cruiser DDs, they, they exist in a really kind of annoying world where they're just spamming fire over islands, can't engage them at all. There's no aircraft carrier to punish that. They don't have defensive fire, so you would expect that in the future, perhaps people could punish it more effectively if aircraft carriers actually existed. But as it stands right now, there are no aircraft carriers. We don't know when the CV rework is on really going to be coming out. And I kind of need to see that, that movement. Wargaming, it, it needs to move towards that. This camping rewarded design is really not compelling to me. And it kind of feels like the ships that are effective right now are those that camp the most effectively, either at range or behind an island. And, you know, that, that just slows down the momentum of the game even further to the point where players are just, they're less likely to want to pick up and play the game, in my opinion. Look at this guy. Absolutely brutal damage output in a short window. Of course, this reload is ridiculous. When considering all this, I just absolutely worked through that guy very quickly. And more enemy targets to select. It's a different sort of play. I definitely would prefer more design elements that reinforce that situational engagement than the camping, hide behind island, long range. Like, I really like this as a design, something that the player could turn on and make use of, but it's probably a little bit too rewarding. Maybe dial it back a little bit in some form. Longer cooldown, less charge, maybe the duration is slightly shorter. I, I don't know, but the, it, it feels very punishing. And we, we already operate in a very punishing environment. Like, it's very hard to come to the game and feel like you can pick it up and play it like the players who are veterans now that it just the learning environment's gone it's incredibly brutal and the game doesn't really tell you exactly what happened you just you just die like if i didn't actively know that this ship exists with this design mechanic then i would not have any way of knowing and that's part of the problem here is we're testing it against players that have no knowledge of it whatsoever and they are leaving windows open that maybe felt okay to play before but now it's 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 incredibly brutal incredibly brutal and it feels great but i think the game needs to do a better job of communicating all this stuff if we're going to go down directions that are just more punishing if we become more punishing well there's got to be more information to allow the player to not allow themselves to be punished, right? That's that's what I think. So, let's talk about the swastika, because it's such a safe topic, right? Of course it's not, but it it's appropriate for a wargaming product. They've got hammer and sickle, they've chosen not to display the swastika, they've chosen not to display the rising sun. They created a way for players to decide what flag to display and it's specifically for the Pan-Asians because in China, Taiwan is not an independent state. And that is where all of that lies. And players expected that Wargaming would allow for some more flag customization, maybe World War I German naval flag. It is part of, I think, a hate group in Germany because they can actually display that versus the swastika. I don't know the story. All I know is I love history and I love seeing, watching, learning history. And playing a game like this allows me to feel a part of history. And I would personally prefer if the player base had the opportunity to decide to display it or not. Now, Wargaming doesn't want that because they don't want it to be associated at all with that and I don't blame them. 
but with the Pan-Asian design in game, where you can select between the Taiwanese flag and the Pan-Asian flag, that's really the hang-up. I hope everyone understands that. That is literally the hang-up for why they didn't openly display, you know, Korea's naval flag by default, Taiwan, uh, any of those. It was Taiwanese. It was the Taiwanese flag. But if you've made that concession and you've allowed the player base to decide what they want to display, you could do it easily with the Rising Sun flag. Certain Eastern European states don't like that the hammer and sickle are openly displayed. The swastika is, is the biggest kahuna when it comes to this sort of symbolism. But the same systems that they built to counter certain countries and their policies, you could easily implement it across the board. And I would enjoy the experience more. I like to sort of role play that I'm a part of the Navy and I would see this sort of symbolism while being a part of the ship or something like that or driving in a vehicle. I like all period accurate stuff. I just enjoy that. It's a part of the experience. You get to research it and all that stuff. And I know there's a lot of players who love doing research on potential ships coming out and it's the same sort of thing. So I'm really excited that Germany did this. I think Germans deserve to play the exact same experience as the rest of the world. I don't think that banning the icon really worked, <laughs> quite frankly. It, uh, it certainly has overstayed its welcome to me personally. Too many times I will see something and I'll go, well, why did they swap that out? Oh, right. They want to just make one version for the entire world. And it just, it just loses its impact. If you're doing something in Wolfenstein, you know who the enemies are. They are abundantly obvious they are bad people. And that helps me as a player feel more invested in the story, in the engagement, in whatever. And when I see that it's been, you know, subbed out for something that never existed, it pulls me out of that experience. It, it makes me, oh, it's a game. And most game companies don't like that when the player is ripped out. But they're completely fine changing statues, icons, flags, emblems, whatever, to protect the PC-ness of the game. And, oh, it's for everyone. Yeah, but you're mass murdering mercenaries who are trying to steal from a scavenger or a, a treasure hunter. I mean, yeah, I, I always enjoy historical games. I love playing in historical vehicles, weapons, using them, having the real icons, the real depiction. It causes me to fall in love all over again. And I hope that this Germany thing leads to more accurate depictions in any game. I just feel like it's unnecessary censorship. It's just an icon. It represents very ugly history, but displaying it in its most accurate, appropriate state might cause players to do more research, pay attention to history more. I think that's healthy. I think as a historical game, you have a responsibility to not allow history to be forgotten. So clearly the ship is really good. I hope that this was interesting. Tell me what you think about all the topics we discussed. I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.